Hey Doombots, Tony Scangilli here with another team review. This time, X-Force, as all of the characters are now accessible in the game, trying to avoid using that word farmable, um, we can talk about the X-Force team. This team is unique uh, in that they're amazing in one game mode in particular, but they kind of fall off as a team in other game modes. Individual characters have a lot of value for stuff like PvP and even some value in raids and arena, but ultimately this team is a war team. So let's go straight into it and talk about the availability of these characters as we check them out in the background. So the X-Force. How do we get them? Well, Deadpool is a relatively early uh, farm in the arena store. Domino is a Blitz Orb exclusive character. Now we've had those before and they usually stay there for a couple months before they're given either a node or a permanent place to access them in the Blitz store. We've seen that with Rescue and Ironheart. So there's a chance that she might go somewhere else. But for right now, you can get her out of opening Blitz Orbs. Cable is available on a node farm as well as the War Store. X-23, a War Store exclusive, and Negasonic is a late farm out of the Doom campaign. So as far as how quickly you can get these characters, some absolutely as quickly as possible. Deadpool, Cable, X-23 are characters you can target farm early. Should you? Probably not, because even though they are used for a legendary unlock in Doc Ock, uh, again, it kind of falls in the same as the Asgardian principle, where it's very unlikely that you're going to be able to access Negasonic early enough to get a huge boost in, in anything, really, for the team. And this team kind of does require specifically Negasonic and X-23 to work to its highest potential. So... Availability, they are an endgame team, but that is also probably because they are a war offense team. They're one of those teams where you unlock them and use them to beat up the big bad defense teams in war. There's some individual characters that have a lot of value, but ultimately if you kind of slept on these guys and let random orbs and events uh, feed into them, uh, or whenever you decide it's time to start farming for Doc Ock, then maybe you can work a little bit on them but their availability is kind of all over the place and they're not necessarily a team you want to rush towards unless you really like Doc Ock. So availability is done let's talk about their usability. So their usability is very simple they are a war offense team period end of discussion. War defense not so much they're pretty stupid on defense they don't have the right targets in mind and you really don't control what happens uh, War Offense, this team has the potential to beat pretty much every meta defense team and a pretty good set of mishmash teams you may see on defense. Uh, of course, you want to factor in power level when you go in. Maybe a 200k team is probably not punching up on a 500k Black Order, but if there's a reasonable separation of power, you should be able to get through some of the hardest teams and then the rest of the teams, they just inherently have... Uh, the kits of character to beat. There are some caveats. Uh, Deadpool, when you're going up against the Mercs, wants to be the highest powered character so he can draw all of the attacks as, as opposed to like your X-23 or your NTW. But ultimately, that's it. Now again, we can go into how NTW and X-23 are PvP uh, goddesses, but there's really no reason to. Because this is a team review, and if we were doing individual character reviews, we could talk about that. So I'll just mention it, but ultimately it, it doesn't make too much of a difference when you look at why you would work on this entire team. The biggest usability of this team is, as we said before, unlocking Doc Ock. If you need Doc Ock, uh, because your Sinister Six team is done, you've unlocked the legendaries from them, and you really want that war offense, war defense comp... Uh, from there. Doc Ock has a little bit of extra splash value both in PvP uh, and in raids as you'll see as time goes on. Doc Ock literally just came out at the time of this video. So yeah, you will eventually want to unlock all legendaries in the same way you'll eventually want to unlock characters like Nick Fury that you may not get particularly early. And that's fine. Uh, but that's their usability, right? Like th Now we see uh, a team that's great at war uh, that will unlock a legendary that's also pretty good at war. So once you become a war-focused player, after you've gone through the rigor morale of completing, you know, 
Ultron and, and making sure you can do the hardest possible versions of the raids and making sure your roster is wide enough, that's when you can take a little bit of a look at where these war offense teams and war offense slash defense teams like the Sinister Six could really benefit from this value. But they're not a high priority. So that's their usability. Nothing crazy there. We're going to go straight into Tier 4s and we're going to start with Domino. And honestly, there's not much. Check out Lady Luck. Uh, biggest thing on this is the passive, as with most characters. On spawn, fill speed bar by 15%. Uh, on X-Force allies turn, 50% chance up to a 75% chance to apply a evade to that ally. That's a big jump, you know, half the time to 3 out of 4. Gain 10% dodge chance, X-Force allies get blah, 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 blah. The extra crit damage for self and all X-Force characters is cute. The biggest upgrade from this would be the chance to apply evades on any X-Force allies turn because that's what you're going to want from them in war offense. So this is a tier four that would definitely help showcase uh, what this team does. Not necessary, but you want them to beat really big bad guys. You probably want this. Moving to no scope. Uh, turns out her damage isn't great. So adding this is reasonable. It'll increase the amount of damage that sets up for the AOEs that you plan on doing with characters like Cable, X-23, and Deadpool later. Eh, ultimately, not much. It is a weird rebound chain ranged attack. We don't see that too often. The increase in damage, uh, you know, 310% sounds like a great number, but her base damage isn't very high. So unless you happen to have high red stars, I would skip this. Again, you know how I feel about damage tier fours unless that character's job is uh, explicitly do damage fire in the hole if deadpool is an ally transfer all negative effects from self and each x-force ally to deadpool fill speed bar by deadpool by 60 percent this brings it to 80 percent with a slight increase uh if you've invested in this team you'll probably find a lot of value in throwing a bunch of bleed stacks on deadpool because he'll take his turn he'll die from the bleed stacks he'll resurrect again that's just a feature he has when she is present, so not really much to talk about there. Uh, and then her basic is, again, damage dealing basic. Guaranteed an assist from a random X-Force ally. There are some that that's great, even Cable. Really big damage dealers on assist, super huge, but ultimately she's kind of there. If you've used her before, you'll know that she dies really quickly, so you really want those evades on her. You really want to make sure that uh, she stays alive at least long enough for Deadpool to die at least once just to get that res out. But she facilitates uh, with the offense uh, downs on her attack. She facilitates with a lot of stuff. Nothing else to really worry about tier 4s on her. So we'll move over to Deadpool. So this is going to be the hard one because I, like probably many other people, really like Deadpool as a character. Uh, nothing in Deadpool is tier 4. Not tier affordable. None of it. He doesn't do enough damage to justify it. As a matter of fact, I kind of do want him to die a lot uh, for the rest of the team's kits. But if you take a quick look, on turn, clear all negative effects from self. If a negative effect is removed, heal 10% of max health, plus 10% for each negative effect removed. These could be really big heals, especially when you wind it up with Domino's special. On kill, 60% chance to generate ability energy for any allied cable uh this doesn't i uh, sorry this goes up with tier fours he's not killing that often so if he was the primary damage dealer this is a huge deal it's not he gets a little bit more health uh base uh when he heals he gets a little bit more healing per negative effect removed these are really really great tier four stat numbers but they ultimately won't matter because that's not deadpool's job on this team it's really just to be a distraction kind of like neener neener that kind of thing uh moving to hack and slash it is a rebound chain just damage not going into it however if domino is an ally this attack cannot be counterattacked. cool notice that deadpool really likes to kill minions uh, apply beat to minions you'll see that more and more as we look into the rest of his kit nothing crazy there uh Attack the most injured target, ignoring taunt, on kill, gain regeneration. If X-23 is an ally, this attack also ignores stealth. This is just damage. This is a tier 4 that you might want if he lives long enough to do it, which is usually his second turn. This could be a very big like execute style attack, especially on the full team. And if you're doing certain fights, like 
maybe you're working down the Asgardians and you really need to take out a stealth character like, off the top of my head, a Thor or a Hela, this is what you're going to use to do it. So if you work it down right, this could be a huge deal. Track your damage and see if you need it to be doing more. Other than that, again, nothing really on him. Uh, dual pistols, just a tier 4 increase in damage. Don't even look at it. But it always bonus attack uh, crits if the target is a minion. Great against certain matchups. Really good against beating up on like Fury Shield, Colson Fury Shield teams or... Uh, Merc teams can really take those guys out, but his kit really didn't explode when this team came out. He's still just the mediocre character he always was. Uh, X-23. So here's the thing about X-23. If you're using non-balanced PvP, there are a lot of tier 4s that she can benefit from for a lot of reasons. In war, not as many. We'll take a quick look, so just keep that in mind. You may be investing in her for a different reason than this war team. Looking at mutant weapon, this is a very long line of text, so I'm just going to pay attention to this right here. The fill speed bar goes up to 20%. This is huge in war. This is huge in PvP. This is huge everywhere. 20% uh, focus for self and all X force allies, or plus 20% focus. Huge, but again, that's on... Uh, Anytime. And then on War Offense, an additional 20% focus for X-Force and Self. So all of the focus they're getting is guaranteeing that the very few things they do that have debuffs on them will happen. Uh, especially if you're ripping off taunts or, or trying to remove deflex. Uh, and herself making sure she nails that ability block that we'll talk about in a second. Really, really important. So this, again, as with passives... Very good passive, probably uh, the first thing you want to make sure she has to make this team work together. Moving to Feral Rage. Um, so this is a big damage attack, but it not really controllable. You know, you can control when you use it, but you can't control who it hits. So it should be an execute, more or less. You should be able to take out at least one character, possibly more, depending on how much AoE damage you've done before this. Uh, the piercing on all attacks... Sure, it is piercing damage, but it's a very low number. It is four or five total hits. Big deal. Always flip stealth on each attack. That's very weird. Um, it's obviously designed so that you can flip a character with stealth as you hit more characters so you can hit them again. Uh, the Honestly, the 70% chance is usually good enough because whoever she is hitting is most likely going to die. You're probably not going to get too much there. Her focus is really good, so you don't have to worry about it being resisted, especially with that tier 4 and her passive. Uh, if X-23 finishes the last non-summon enemy, repeat this full attack against the most injured summon targets. That's kind of a cute little way of saying, like, just absolutely start killing off the targets. That's one of the reasons why this team crushes uh, Fury Shield and as Guardians, because this will kill everybody but Greg, and then it'll go out for Greg. So, reasonable investment. Not necessarily required for any game mode, but you won't hate it. She is a primary damage dealer. You want to make sure you get them in. And then Relentless Assault. Attack primary target for a ton of piercing damage, plus a pliability block. If blocked or dodged, gain bonus attack for more damage, and then apply plus one ability block up to a maximum of three. Bonus attack is unavoidable. In war, this attack gains four quadrillion, bajillion, facillion, idillion focus is going to happen is going to happen in war you're going to hit the ability block in the character you need to it's going to be great this going up 60 percent primary target on all attacks that's just 300 and 350 on these yeah this is one of the best abilities she has in both pvp and in uh war on her team so this is a great investment just to make sure it does more damage overall the ability block is kind of the main reason this is great, especially as you're going through things like defense up uh, and deflect, and since both attacks have a chance of applying defense up, if you get through uh, the first attack that's deflected, the second attack should probably stick it. No real problems there. Uh, and snicked. I'm sorry, snicked! Uh, attack primary target for 200 piercing, 75% chance to gain evade, slightly more damage, higher chance to gain evade. You know the drill. How important is that invade to you? How long is this fight going to go off for you where that 
25% uh, chance hitting or missing that evade is a really big deal. What I will say is relevant is it does proc when she assists. So if Domino calls her for assist, uh, she will gain that evade. Pretty useful, but ultimately kind of a waste of tier fours if you ask me i think there are two that are phenomenal on her passive and special and then everything else is just whatever you got to spend uh, moving off of x23 we'll go to cable cable's rework was phenomenal uh, and you'll notice i even put some tier fours in him from a while ago uh, time sense on spawn fill character speed by five percent for self and allies that's a huge speed up for the beginning of everybody on charge bury yourself for 20 percent uh, on turn, 30% chance to apply counter to a mutant ally, 20% blah, blah, blah. I'm not going to read this out. You can, you can read. I, know, I trust you guys. 10% uh, chance, the, the tier 4 is 10% chance to apply counter to a random mutant ally, which uh, brings the entire thing to a solid 30, and 10% chance of this, I'm sorry, 10% of this character's max health as barrier when charged. Uh, kind of survivability stuff. To me, I don't think this is absolutely worthwhile. Uh, when I had read the kit the first time and when I read all the characters, I assumed this was going to be way more relevant. I didn't think they were going to have the damage that they needed to have. Man, was I wrong. So I wouldn't necessarily recommend this tier 4, uh, especially because it's only a handful of, of upgrades. Uh, he's pretty good on his own, so I wouldn't really worry about this. Uh, Psychic Surge, big damage attack. It is unavoidable damage. If Deadpool is an ally, he assists. On kill, him and Deadpool speed bars go up by 70%. Tier 4 is just damage. He does good damage. If you want more good damage, this is it. Nothing really to talk about there. Overload, I think this is a very important tier 4. Um, mainly because uh, the increase in damage is an AoE damage attack. So you're hitting more people. So it's not just 40%. It's 40% and then 20%. It's a bunch of damage to a lot of people. But more importantly, if charged, clear all positive effects uh, from primary target. Clear two from the adjacents and attack targets two spaces from primary. The if charge line on this is really why I was paying attention because it's so easy for him to get charged, especially on a war attack, he kind of starts with it, that this attack can absolutely obliterate buffs on a bunch of opposing characters. So characters that are in a cargo bay might just get destroyed. The reduction of speed bar is also relevant, but this ready on turn one to me this was a no-brainer and uh again not saying it's necessary just saying what you get for it is absolutely amazing so i had no problem with that one and then plasma rifle is pew 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 plus gain charge in you know tier four more pews it's an extra pew it's fine do what you want i, I wouldn't recommend it uh finally we have ntw uh, i love her so we're gonna get that out of the way Yes, I don't regret anything I've put into her because she does a ton of damage. She is fast, tanky, sur incredibly survivable, and a huge damage dealer. So we're going to go over these, and I'm telling you this now so you know that, like, why I spent these is because I really am impressed with her kit. Ticking Time Bomb, on spawn, bury yourself for a percentage of her health, on turn, bury on enemy turn. Bury yourself for 5% of her max health and fill speed bar by 10%. 10% uh, armor for self if this character has barrier. So that goes up from 20%, 30% armor. Armor doesn't actually matter in this game, but if armor is taking a little bit of tankiness away from your really big tax and she's constantly gaining a shield, it's not just the damage reduction overall, it's the damage reduction plus the constant shielding that's keeping her survivable. For me, this was kind of a no-brainer. On War Offense, 20% damage for self and all X-Force allies. Goes straight up to 50% from 30. That's a huge boost to everybody. Going from 30% to 50% damage, that's a lot. Especially when you're using some of the characters who don't quite do damage, like Deadpool, like Domino. That go takes them from like, eh, to like, hmm. So we're gonna, we're gonna lean on that one. Warhead, this is her turn 1 AoE. Attack all enemies for... Uh, 300 or 360 with tier 4s. Apply heal block for 2 turns. On war offense, clear defense up on all targets. Uh, this investment of 60% is, again, because this is the first attack that's going to happen. I have gone into fights where this attack has not only applied heal block and clear deflex and done a bunch of stuff, but almost killed other characters, which really lines up well with like Deadpool's rebound and Cable's 
energy refresh, like, or, and cables turn rewind, like, AoE. It, it's so good to lead off with this attack. Uh, and you'll see why when we get to the special, but this is just a huge boost of damage. And since she's one of the best damage dealers on this team, if you're only spending tier fours on passives and you can only invest in one character for damage, I'm telling you it's her. Uh, particle charge, not ready on turn one, so it's ready after you do that giant AoE smash. Attack primary target and adjacent targets for 300% damage. Clear all positive effects from each target. That is the tier four. It's like three positive effects. You're not going to really feel the difference between three and all for the most part. Thankfully, with X23's um, focus buff, she's going to get rid of everything. This attack is going to just take off all the buffs on whoever the three characters or more that she happens to hit are. Uh, I don't think this is necessary, but like I said, damage is really important for her. So I want to make sure that if she does take that attack, multiple people are getting cracked. That's it. And this attack cannot be blocked incredibly relevant based on how deflects work uh, energy blast you'll notice this is the only one i didn't upgrade it's because when we get to the point where uh, she's using her basic the fight's already either long over or i'm cleaning up so i don't really need that extra 50 percent damage uh, i wouldn't recommend it but it doesn't do anything else it doesn't like heal block it doesn't chain it's not extra kind of damage so i'm gonna skip on this one if you really like it you're more than welcome to but it just wasn't really there for me so that's it as far as tier fours for this team are concerned. Uh, rating is going to be a little bit mean, considering I do love this team and I do love using them in war. This is, uh, I'm going to give them a B plus rating. And that's, I'm not even giving that team a B plus rating. I'm giving like NTW and X23 the A's because not only are they great in the fights, but they're great in other places. But the other three characters are like C's or lower. So it had to average out to a B. This is the um, premier war attack team. There's very few teams they can't beat. Uh, if you invest in them and get a 300k, 400k version of the X-Force, there are almost no teams that they cannot beat. Uh, in Arena, this team might be able to help you push through if you know, you're know you not at a full endgame roster. So if you aren't going to spend some money... So this team would be great, but again, it's going to be on the strength of NTW and X23. It's not going to be the Deadpool, the Domino, or the Cable that are doing much. If I had to tell you the trio on this team, it is the first three characters you see right here. NTW, Cable, and X23. You can leave Deadpool and Domino behind because odds are they're going to die real quick anyway. So it's not that important. And Cable, Negasonic, and X23 will be able to 3v5 a lot of fights uh, as you probably have experienced that so it is a b team they're just lackluster in all of the game modes and since this game is more than just war or raids or dark dimension it's all of the game modes they don't hold a candle to some of the other teams that are just hands down more usable even the x-men while you still have to use raid heals to keep phoenix going you get to in this fight they just don't really have the sustain uh, as a team to give them longevity and they don't have a crazy amount of stats but as pvp becomes more and more relevant if they ever start doing team comp pvp or something keep keep your eye out for specifically this kind of team because this kind of team would probably be one of the strongest versions of a team in pvp uh, other than that thank you guys so much for watching and uh, do me a favor comment below let me know what your X-Force team does. What's your highest punch up with X-Force? Are you looking forward to them? Are you as sad as I am that Deadpool isn't great? You know, those kind of things are, are what I'm looking for now. So hopefully you enjoyed this video. Have a good night. Have a great day. I've been Tony Scangili, and I'll catch you later.